Okay. The elderly prison population. It's exploding. You cannot believe how it's, it is the fastest growing segment of the prison population. It's crazy. Look who's in my van. <laughs> <laughs> She's trapped me. That's right. I can't get out. That's right. Move over. <laughs> yeah, I don't know what's wrong with my van for these, but... You want some iced tea? I'd love some. Okay, thank you. Thank you very much. Now, I had to shut the door. We're very warm in here. I'm going to have to open it in a minute. Just as we started, we came here. It was so quiet at this park. All of a sudden, at the kids' park, somebody's got a remote control. Yeah, yeah, one of those cars. <laughs> right over here, at 4 o'clock, they decided to do the landscaping. They got a blower going. Yeah. I think we need to get a big sign, like a piece of poster board. Yes. Put it on top and say, recording in progress. Let's see. Are they gone? I don't know. Maybe. Shh, hey, don't. this is really good. Listen to that car over there. Well, they're having a good time. Well, this is, we're kidding around, but this is a very serious subject. Yeah, really I found is. this subject online and I told him, uh, Paul, about it. And I said, you know, this needs to be brought out because we are talking about who lately? Seniors. Senior citizens. Yes. I mean, when was the last time you thought about a senior citizen? A fly, just, <laughs> a fly just came in. A senior citizen inmate in a prison. Well, let's go with some facts, shall we? Let's, like, what the heck is happening? Let's What's on going on? Yes. Elderly people are dying of diseases right in the prisons. Not only that, but elderly before they die, <laughs> they're falling, they're hitting their heads. Uh, they're, they're becoming disabled and none of the guards and a lot of the prisons, they're not prepared for this elderly population that is exploding inside of, the, of um, our prison system in the United States. And they're, they're not being cared for properly. All the rules that we have out here for the elderly, they don't apply in a prison. And it's a very sad situation. Actually, 13% of the prison prisoners in prisons across the country are elderly yes 55 and older inmates there's 46,000 elderly aging old prisoners inmates in America and that population is growing at would you believe 200 percent per year why? Why do we have this exploding? And you guys are probably already know this if you're if you know what's going on, if you're up here, you know, smart. But let's just let's just um, spell it out. People do not want inmates to be released because it helps keep society safe. And that's the big thing. Even in elections, the politicians certainly don't want to be known as easy on crime so they're going to say you know we're going to lock them up and throw away the key and right. that's that's what we want to hear from our politicians right let's get rid of these bad guys that have done bad things right and uh, forget about them and we're not saying one way or the other by the end of this video you'll understand I mean, that, that we all need to be concerned about this. Now, the introduction of sentencing philosophies, such as life without parole and three strikes you're out, um, they were not designed to increase inmate sentencing. They were made to send a message to society that we will not tolerate crime. And a lot of politicians ran on this, especially in the 70s. Oh, yeah. This, you know, three strikes, you're out, no parole, you're in there for life. Well, the uh, politicians, when they made these, did not know that down the road, like now, we are going to be dealing with all of these inmates that can't get out of the prison system. And they're like 80, 90 years old. 
and it's um will go on to more of the problem of what's going on and and just to be clear yeah uh that doesn't uh say that these people committed these crimes when they were elderly because of these uh, uh car incarcerations without the possibility of parole they could have committed these crimes in their 20s, 30s, 40s, 50s, and in their 80s and 90s, as Lee said, they're still locked up. They're still yeah. in there. Yeah. Let's lock them up and throw away the key. Right. Well, I don't know. Well, let's talk about the true cost of lock them up and throw away the key. An average, this is an average, 60 to 70 um, thousand dollars per year per inmate who is elderly and that is that's twice as much as is spent on the younger prisoners yes medical costs are nine times more than younger convicted inmates nine times more their medical costs well, you can imagine, yeah. And one state has estimated that those costs can go as high as $100,000 a year for one inmate. Right. Now, inmates who live, they say statistically, inmates who live 80 years of age and beyond, their cost estimates are, hold your breath, mm -hmm. two million per year. Yeah. Now, here's, I want to explain something. The prison system has deemed 50 or 55 to 65 as being elderly. Well, you know, that might be why there's such a high number of elderly. So I don't know, to me, and I think to you, like 80 and beyond can be considered probably really elderly. Before that, we're kind of like senior citizens. So if you have all these elderly people in the prison system, that can run two million per year, estimated. Crazy. Yes. Just think of the tax burden that we're talking about here. That yeah. $16 billion in the United States is more than the Department of Education spends for elementary and secondary schools in yes. total. It's amazing. Every hey, year. Let's go with some facts. People who commit a crime while having dementia, you know, they can actually still be put in prison. They already had dementia. They can't remember committing the crime, but they put them in prison in many cases. That seems kind of ridiculous. Yes. And... Some of the challenges for prisons, quite honestly, include unclear definitions of old age you know how to for the guards well how do we treat these people providing staff training for older offenders we need staff training programs to help them to understand how they need to handle these people and how they what they need to do with them well because a lot of people might exhibit um dimension things but if the guards don't know anything about it and they're usually young people that have really had no training that they have no clue right that that's what they're exhibiting it's right. dementia so they can report that and of course then there's the financing that ugly financing thing it's always how do we finance these old age programs yeah right and then how do you plan for the release of these prisoners? Yeah. You know, I have to say that I, it, it gives me pause to think, what about the victims or the victims' families of these crimes? They don't want these guys or gals back on the street. Yeah. They want them to be punished. But at some point, don't we get to the, the, the time that there should be a release because they're sick, they have dementia, whatever the reason? Yeah. So, well, a lot of them, they're dying of diseases and then they're housed in prison instead of regular facilities that might be cheaper to, to take care of them. Yeah. One case in point, many of these uh, people, the, the uh, prisoners are in wheelchairs. Yet you go out to the yard, you go into the prison building itself 
and they don't have the proper handicapped facilities yeah. to handle a wheelchair. There are, a, there are a lot of wheelchairs yeah. in prisons now and canes and walkers. Here's a fact. Now, this was shocking. In Oklahoma, they incarcerate women twice as much as any other state in the United States. And I will mention that in America, our inmate population is higher than any other that, that I know of. Right. Around the world. Yeah. Yeah. So the prison systems have to use volunteers more than ever right now. And they're trying to get more volunteers to help out because the funding just isn't there. And this is due to the elderly population that is exploding in the prisons in the United States. And this is really good. They're training other inmates to become orderlies of these very elderly bedridden people that can't feed themselves and they're in prison. And you had mentioned that you heard that what, how much did they get for that? These inmates that are trained to be orderlies, they make $5 a month. Ooh, yeah. A month. Yep. And one prison actually had to start, they had so many Alzheimer's patients and, pa and patients, inmates, they're prisoners. Um, that they had to start a unit for the cognitive impaired inmates. And uh, a lot of them have dementia and they have Alzheimer's. And I was kind of thinking, I mean, I'm not going to be, I'm not, I'm not going one way or the other. Do I, you know, am I for prisoners? I'm, no, I'm glad that they're locked up. I have children and I don't want to get hurt out here in society. Some people have to be locked up, but I mean, a lot of them have dementia and Alzheimer's and we're just spending all of this money um, for that. It's kind of, seems kind of, kind of crazy. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. It really does. I know. So we have a couple stories. I will let Paul, you know, talk about this. Well, this is one of those good news, bad news kinds of things. Yeah. There is a prisoner in a prison in the in this country who was 100 years old, yeah. nearing his 101st birthday. He committed a terrible crime. He killed two women when he was 82 years old. Oh my gosh. And I, I don't know the full circumstances about the crime and so forth and so on, yeah. but he's now bedridden at 100 years of age. Yeah. What? He is no threat to anybody anymore, I wouldn't think. He's yeah. bedridden for crying out loud. Well, he's he is cognitively okay because he was being interviewed, but he is bedridden and he can't really walk, which comes to another, we had talked about this, it comes to another fact that he was 82 because some of the people were saying they're too old, they're not going to commit crimes. Well, obviously, that's not entirely true. Right. right. Yeah. And then the other story that we heard was this one inmate, I think he was, he was convicted way back for, I think it was molestation of, a, of you know, somebody younger than what he should have done. And I don't know the full story of that. And I'm not being like, oh my gosh, you know, I'm not for them or against them. Um, I'm glad that there are prisons for people who commit violent crimes, but he has such severe dementia. And they said that he actually got more time put on his sentence because he had his Alzheimer's and he punched a nurse in the stomach. And I cut inside. I thought, yeah, well, I have worked in an Alzheimer's unit only a couple times. I did not want to get assigned to that ever. That was not my thing. I don't want to be in there. That will rattle your nerves 24 seven. But Alzheimer's patients can be very violent and they will punch somebody in the stomach. They'll pull your hair. They'll, they'll sock you. They'll, uh, yeah, they'll hurt you. It's, it can be dangerous working in an Alzheimer's no ward of a nursing home. Yeah. But this, in this case, he got more time when he shouldn't even be there in the first place with Alzheimer's. He's bedridden. And because he punched a nurse, I just think it's, they're not the, the prison system doesn't seem to be, um, ready for this. And this all started, what, in the 70s with this yeah. 
you know, three strikes you're out and um, they're just, you know, no mercy. Right. Yeah, no mercy. And as right. I said, you know, the, the the victims, the victim families, Yeah. when that person went to trial for that terrible crime, whatever yeah. it was, they deserved oh, yeah. a long, punitive sentence that, that will hopefully uh, cause some uh, remorse and retrain them so that they can be an effective member of society. But that's not happening. Yeah. It is not happening. Well, I've, uh, we our prison system in America gets criticized by many other um, first world countries. They say, you guys are like back in the dark ages. These things don't work. These things, you know, those don't work. I'm not an expert at the criminal justice system. Um, I remember I took some classes because of psychology. There's a whole psychology with the criminal defense system, you know, justice system. But I'm not well versed with this at this time. And, you know, so I'm not going to say that I am. But I do know that this subject is, this is, this is, um, these are seniors and these are the elderly. And I'm a senior and you're a senior and we wanted to arrest, <laughs> arrest, <laughs> we don't want to arrest anybody, but we do want to address it. And I found this interesting because when was the last time you thought of one of your, your in your generation, um, aging in a prison and on, in a walker, in a wheelchair, dying of diseases but one thing I did think about, you know, I do know that the prison system has horrible food. They really do. Um, it's not nutritious. It's just, it's just food. It's, you know, hot dogs or the sandwich with white bread all the time. Well, that would almost mean if somebody had a life sentence, right? Yeah. If they've been yeah. in the prison system for life, they're not going to be too healthy. And a lot of people say, who cares? Well... That's our $16 billion budget taking care of these elderly people. Yeah. It's, um, what was it, the, what did we say, nine times? More expensive. Yeah, I'll yeah. take medical expenses nine times more expensive yeah. than younger. And, and I, I must say that this is not something that I had thought about. Right. I mean, if you see a movie and there's a prison involved yep. and they, they show the shot out in the in the in the yard or whatever they're called the exercise area or even inside the prison yeah we're talking young people normally a lot of them are buffed up oh yeah the, yeah yeah they've got nothing better to do than work out to kill some time right. or, or improve their bodies or whatever and get their master's degrees too but i don't I had not really thought about the elderly I know. Uh, population in prison. And do we just lock them up and throw away the key? Or is there some way when that we can better help these people? Uh, have they gotten to a point where they're not a threat to society anymore? Is, is there something else that we can do? We'd really be interested to hear your, uh, your take on this right. and any suggestions that you might have. Well, there are a few solutions that I did find, but first of another fact, most elderly inmates have chronic illnesses, which have substantial costs, like we mentioned, implications, cost implications for the whole prison system and for us. Um, a lot of them need hearing aids. A lot of them need glasses. A lot of them need medications. And the doctors and the medical having to come into the prison system on a regular basis, I mean, and diagnosing, I mean, a lot of them have Huntington's disease. They, they just, they're, they're ridden with disease. And a lot of them are end of the life issues and they're still in the prison system. Yeah. So what are the solutions that we found? What about solutions? What well, are the solutions? Do I you found, have a solution? Yes, I found four. We need to change the severe sentencing practices or maybe put some stipulations in there until blah, blah, blah. Yeah. Another one is consider early release for the end of life issues. Yeah. And number three is to provide geriatric training for prisons. Yeah. For the staff 
and another one is restructure to provide more medical treatments in the prison systems that might make it more cost effective. Yeah, they could provide things right in there. So, right. and uh, I think this is a pretty good discussion. I don't, um, this, uh, what does this have to do with the nomad life? Well, <laughs> absolutely nothing, <laughs> except these are our people from our generation. And I just thought I'd bring it up. We wanted to bring it up. Yeah. When was the last time you thought about this? Something to think about that our tax, well, if it's, nomads are just normal people and those are our tax dollars too, going for a situation like that. Um, I guess we could go in. There are actually people who are going in and helping out in the prisons, but um, no. that's not something I think I would enjoy. I'm sorry, I don't think I would. I wouldn't mind going in nursing homes, but I would be uncomfortable going in a prison. Mm -hmm. I think I, I I have been a visitor in prisons, and I, I I'm sure that I could do it. Um, and I think that a lot of the things that we read and and uh, watched videos of, I think the prisoners really appreciate it. So, in by and large, so I think that that's something I could do as a volunteer, but. I'm not trained, I, you know? I mean, what could I do exactly? I'm yeah. not sure. Well, we hope you enjoyed this video and um, we're here to bring you uh, riveting subjects and <laughs> things about the nomad world. So we appreciate you watching. Please subscribe, give me a thumbs up and go to minimanly.com for net gators and arm gators. Make sure that you're, um, I can't do international shipping. It's almost like up to $100 to even a little package. So I can't do that. But if you're in the United States, I can ship to you. And I've exercised videos and we got the book, How to Live in a Minivan, The Minivan Leeway. So. All right. Okay. We love you guys. Till next time. Bye-bye now. Bye.